as we've been going through this in class, a lot of you have asked, well, how do we change the money supply? How does that uh, come about? And it's finally about time for us to start talking about that. But before we can talk about that, we need to talk about the Federal Reserve, okay? Um, that's our central banking system here in the U.S. You'll hear it referred to as the Fed, okay? Um, it was established in 1913. We've had other central banks before. They've been kind of controversial. So they've been in various states of we, we, we make one, we tear it up, we make one, we tear it up. But this one has been around since 1913. Now, unlike some other countries, we actually have several banks. Um, we've got uh, Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Cleveland, Richmond, Atlanta, Chicago, St. Louis, Minneapolis, Kansas City. Yes, there is one here in Dallas and San Francisco. Okay, so we've got all these different banks, but they kind of work together uh, as one big system. Um, Federal Reserve has seven members. Uh, they're appointed by the president, and they serve 14-year terms. It's very important to understand that this is supposed to be an apolitical position, um, kind of similar to the Supreme Court, where they're kind of supposed to be above politics, um, where they don't have to respond to kind of public opinion because they're not worried about getting fired unless they do some sort of gross negligence, okay? Um, now, that's not always the case. You know, there's always going to be some pol politicalization there. Um, <clears throat> um, then there's the chairman of the Board of Governors, and it's chosen from that board by the president, okay? And they only serve a four-year term. Okay. Now, there's also the Open Market Committee, which we'll talk more about later. Um, there's 12 voting members. Uh, it's the Board of Governors plus um, a rotating group of five presidents from the Federal Reserve Banks. Uh, and New York is always on there um, because they're kind of the ones who head up these uh, open market transactions. Okay. Now, what is the purpose of the Federal Reserve? Okay. Why do we have the central bank? Well, We've talked about with fractional reserve banking, there is a chance for destabilization. Um, you know, it's it's pretty easy to disrupt the system um, if you're not being careful. So that's their job is to stabilize this banking system. They set monetary policy. Um, they control the money supply. We'll talk about how they do that in a minute. Um, one of their goals is to stabilize prices, okay? They, they don't want to see high inflation. They want relatively low inflation. Um, and they also want to maximize employment. These are called the dual mandates of the Federal Reserve. Now, I don't know if you remember me talking about this earlier, but as we increase inflation, okay, as we increase the money supply to increase inflation, in the short term, that brings down unemployment. Well, this gives the Federal Reserve a problem because the same tools that they use to increase inf or to decrease inflation will increase unemployment and vice versa. So they kind of have to strike this balance here between whether they're going to focus on maximizing employment or stabilizing prices. Um, so during a recession, usually you'll see them not worry so much about inflation, they'll, they'll go with a little bit of inflation to bring down unemployment, okay? Uh, and when employment's really good, they'll focus on bringing inflation back down, okay? We'll talk about the, the mechanism, how they do that in a little bit. Then there's the lender of last resort. Now, here's the thing. We know that banks can get in a bad situation if um, too many people come in and pull their money out at the same time. There's other things that can get them in trouble as well. Uh, a lot of banks have started basically become in, becoming investment firms as well. Um, so banks can actually borrow money from the Federal Reserve if they get in a pinch. We'll talk about this more later, but the discount rate is the interest rate that 
banks get charged for overnight loans from the Fed. So basically, if the banks have to take out a loan, this is the rate that they have to pay. And as of 2009, okay, when we decided maybe we shouldn't let the banks do whatever they want, the Federal Reserve also is in charge of kind of regulating these banks. Okay, That's kind of an additional responsibility that, that they have. So again, they're supposed to stabilize the banking system, set monetary policy, uh, trying to either maximize employment or stabilize prices. They're a lender for banks, and they're supposed to regulate banks. Okay, These are all of the things that the Fed is supposed to be doing, and we'll talk about how they do that in the next video.